One topic we didn't get to the last time was the issue of the potential closure of the night school, and it became a controversy um, arranged widely outside the law school, right. too. Right. Um, and you were involved in that. Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, uh, I read Jerry's, uh, Jerry Barron's history. Jerry was dean at the time, and um, the way he tells it, and of course I wasn't on the inside of it, but the way he tells it, a faculty committee uh, proposed closing the night school. Uh, he doesn't explain uh, exactly why that proposal, uh, but my perception of the proposal was that uh, some members of the faculty, that committee, believed that you couldn't be a high quality law school having a night division, that somehow having a night school connoted uh, second rate. Um, but that's just my perception. I'm not sure whether that was theirs or not. In any event, uh, when the proposal went public, and the faculty voted for it, so the, the, the faculty adopted the recommendation and it went public, um, the law school had basically been a night school. When I went to school in the 50s, my recollection is there were two night sections of a hundred or more students, and I think there was a day section of around 70 students. So it was almost three quarters night. And it had been that way ever since the Second World War, uh, and earlier, I suppose. Um, and the result of that was that almost all the illustrious or successful alumni were night graduates. And they sort of rose up in wrath about closing the night school. Um, a committee was formed. I turned out to be the faculty member on the committee. I was also a graduate. Um, so we met every couple of weeks, pretty much, I think. As I recall, it was quite a good committee. It had a lot of very competent people on it, and um, and we looked at one thing. I did, uh, being an insider, I went to the admissions office and asked for the records of the incoming class, just to see who these people were. And uh, it was it was interesting. The um, uh, they were taking about a hundred students at night, roughly, maybe a few more. Uh, the best, if you looked at the best half of that class, you had really interesting people. I mean, we had, there were three PhDs, there were three doctors from the medical school, uh, there were a group of people, the kinds of people that were coming. A lot of people wanted to get a night degree, or wanted to get a law degree, and they were working here in town. Uh, if you looked at the bottom end of that spectrum, uh, what apparently was happening was that uh, they were admitting people who could not have been admitted to the day school, who didn't have the credentials. Uh, and you know, we all, well I don't, but most people in the faculty believe in academic credentials. They want high credential peer people. So, and I think that was part of the justification for closing the school is it wasn't right to uh, turn down day students and then let them or students who perceived that they couldn't be uh, admitted a day, therefore would apply for night and maybe sneak in. So uh, we had some we had some really good people, uh, probably better than the day admits, and uh, and we had this group at the bottom. The um, the best story, uh, we met, we finally uh, took it to the Board of Trustees. The President had uh, approved the proposal as well. He finally went to the Board of Trustees. The best story uh, that came out of that, from my point of view, and I've been telling this story ever since, that one member of the committee was Oliver Gash, and Oliver Gash was a, a um, well-known district court judge here in town and chancellor of the Episcopal Diocese, a really uh, solid citizen. Uh, kind of a uh, 19th century gentleman, and um, and he came to the committee uh, after we'd been meeting for a month or two, maybe two months, 
and he said, uh, I need to tell you uh, what has happened. He said, I, uh, what I, uh, we've been getting all these letters from the alumni, and every time we get a letter, uh, he said, I make copies of the letter and I send a copy to each member of the Board of Trustees. And uh, he said, I, I began to get calls last week from members of the Board saying, Oliver, um, would you please stop sending these letters? I mean, you've sent us 60 letters and we think we know what's happening, so please stop. And, and he said, he said, my reply was, uh, I'm sorry, but I feel honor-bound to send you every letter. I can't. 